China's response to the COVID-19 coronavirus outbreak was massive. Entire regions were locked down, factories mobilized to produce medical equipment, hospitals built in days, and millions of people quarantined. But all that didn't stop the virus from spreading around the world. So if an outbreak hits the United States, will the country be ready? Now, it's not so much a question of if this will happen anymore, but rather more a question of exactly when this will happen and how many people in this country will become infected. In 2018, President Trump did something that most people probably didn't pay attention to. He shut down the teams that dealt with pandemics at the Department of Homeland Security and the White House National Security Council. He also cut funding to the Center for Disease Control's Global Health Section, which had been working around the world training local workers on how to detect outbreaks, building up labs, and emergency responses. The goal was to stop future outbreaks where they start, before they spread far. But budget cuts forced that program to leave 39 of the 49 countries it was working in. Trump also tried to cut the Public Health Service Commission Corps by 40%. Congress resisted him on that one, but retiring officers haven't been replaced. The most important thing in a pandemic is that you have a government that tells the truth and you have a people that that trusts their political institutions because those institutions are the ones who are going to manage that risk. It took Trump two months from the start of the outbreak in China for him to put someone in charge of the U.S. response. But Mike Pence doesn't have the best track record when it comes to science or when it comes to tackling outbreaks of disease. And when Trump was asked about whether the deep cuts to these health budgets and loss of experts would make it more difficult to fight an outbreak, he said this. And rather than spending the money, and I'm a business person, I don't like having thousands of people around when you don't need them. When we need them, we can get them back very quickly. So while it can seem like the Trump administration doesn't take disease prevention seriously, the US does have some of the world's best scientists and medical facilities. What it doesn't have is universal health care. A lot of our healthcare system is dedicated to finding ways to bill people, and that's all just useless. Um, and it also it scares people, because if you go to the hospital or if you go to the doctor, you might get some random bill for $5,000 or $10,000. I mean, I mean it's, it's literally unbelievable when you explain it to someone who's not in the American healthcare system. And all that stuff is really bad in a pandemic. More than 27 million Americans don't have health insurance, and many more don't have enough insurance, meaning that a lot of Americans might put off going to the doctor if they start showing symptoms, because it would be too expensive. 51% of people who get health insurance from their employers say they or their family members have skipped or delayed getting medical treatment because of the cost. That's a major risk. A delayed diagnosis gives the virus more time to spread, and that could be catastrophic. What you need in a pandemic is really good surveillance of what's happening. And if people are afraid of the healthcare system, which most people in America kind of are, including doctors, by the way, um, then people are going to be reluctant to trust the institution. But in the United States, the healthcare system's priority is making money. And the massive insurance and billing bureaucracy, as well as the rising cost of pharmaceuticals, is part of the reason why medical care costs more per capita here than most other countries. When there are problems in hospitals, because of the coronavirus, which there will be. I mean, does it even make sense to have a billing department, bring those people to work? And while a vaccine is at least a year and a half away from being available, former pharmaceutical lobbyist and current Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar won't even commit to making it available to anyone who needs it. I'm saying we would would want to ensure that we work to make it affordable, but we can't control that price because we need the private sector to invest. The CDC has warned that if there is an outbreak, Americans should expect disruptions to their daily lives. So what could that look like? You're going to see a whole series of supply shortages, everything from electronics to medication to parts for industrial inputs. It's it's going to be really interesting to watch, but also we're going to start to see in, in important areas, you know, the stores won't have stuff on their shelves. And I don't necessarily just mean like retail, I mean things like hospitals are going to have problems getting important. You know, medical supplies. The U.S. relies heavily on imports, especially from China. In 2018, China was the U.S.'s largest supplier of goods, accounting for over 20% of all U.S. imports. But right now, businesses there are struggling to stay profitable, with so much of the country shut down. This could potentially paralyze supply chains and disrupt the flow of products to American consumers. That's why the markets are kind of crashing right now, because all of a sudden a bunch of corporate executives who hadn't really paid attention to the opacity of their supply chains are saying, wait, what's going on? Wait, why can't we produce? It's showing up in the in the financial markets, but it's going to start showing up in the uh, kind of in the stores at some point. There is another huge potential threat to the U.S. This year's elections could be seriously impacted. 
What if mass gatherings are canceled? Can you have a convention? Can you have elections, right? How do you have elections? Do people go to polling places and, and vote? Um, when that's a, that's a gathering, right? That's a health risk. If the virus does spread in the US, a low voter turnout could be a real risk. Viral epidemics aren't you. They've happened throughout history and local breakouts aren't uncommon today. But it's unclear whether the people currently in charge in the US understand what's needed to respond effectively to the challenge. With air travel and urbanization helping viruses spread around the world quickly, governments need to ensure scientific research is well-funded and that everyone has access to basic healthcare.